Hey everybody, it's Comphelp. Thank you for watching this video. In this video, I'm going to show you how easy it is to make a background that looks just like this. I've had a lot of people asking how I made it, so here's the video. It's just for you guys. It was like so highly requested that you know, I'm just I'm just going to do it because it's so easy. Okay, you're going to be amazed. All right, so I'm going to break this video down into steps and maybe this video is going to be it's going to be a little bit different than how I usually do. It's going to be cut in sections. All right, so the first part, we're going to get the size of your screen resolution, which uh, some people may not know how to do. So what we're going to do is right-click the desktop and go to Properties. Next thing, you're going to go to Settings, and you're going to find how big your screen resolution is. Mine is 1,280 by 800 pixels, and this is actually what I'm going to type in Photoshop. That way I can get my nice size wallpaper. It'll fit exactly, and I don't have to uh, have any pixelated backgrounds or anything. You don't have to mess around with that kind of stuff. Alright, so that's that. The next thing I want to do is open up Adobe Photoshop CS3. We're going to go to File, New, and just as I showed you, type in the numbers that you had on your wallpaper or on your screen resolution. Mine was 1280 by 800. Yours might be different. Uh, I set my resolution to 72. Um, my color mode is RGB mode or RGB color my background contents I usually like to start with transparent just click OK and there you go that's how big my wallpaper is All right, basically you know scaled down of course okay the second thing I want to do is lay down a background okay well my background I want it to be black so what I'm gonna do here is select this color option to default by default bring out the black and white um, foreground and background colors okay so I'm just gonna go alt backspace the alt key and the backspace key and that'll automatically uh, fill that layer with the foreground color. Okay. So then that's that. And the next thing I want to do is create a new layer, and I want to bring out my logo onto this. So let's go to File. We're gonna click Place, and go look for your logo or the picture you want uh, to be the main attention of your wallpaper or yeah, your logo basically. All right, so now I have my logo here. What I want to do is resize it down a little bit. This way, it doesn't look too big, not too small, uh, just medium. Okay, and I want to place it in the upper middle part of my wallpaper. Of course, I do uh, recommend you mess around with this, um, place things in different places, do whatever you want, make it your own. You know, I don't want you just creating a total copy of this, because then it, it's, there's no originality in that, you know what I mean? So just go ahead and mess around with this. If you like your logo to be over here, that's totally cool. If you like it over here, that's fine. I actually put mine in the middle here, so that's what I'm going to do. And I'm going to click the check mark. Actually, I'm going to resize it up a little bit. Alright. And check mark. So now we have my logo, and we have our black background, both on different layers. Okay, the next part I want to do is I want to add a text. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and make a new layer, of course, and go to this text option tool. And as you can see, I have my font set, uh, set on Technoid, which I'll have the link to this font in the description if you're interested in using it. Uh, I think it gives a nice techie feel, in my opinion. I have my font set, set to 80 point. 80 font size. You know, there we go. And depending on how big your screen resolution is, your point size, your font size will change. Cause if your wallpaper is smaller than mine is, if your screen is a little bit smaller, your text is going to be smaller. And also, depending on how big your logo is, you don't want your text to overwhelm the logo. So, yep. Okay, we're going to set this to white. This is the um, font color. Set it to white. And the next thing I want to do is go ahead and bring out my character settings here. And as you see, I have my Technoid 80 point size font. Um, and I set, which one was it? This one right here to negative 50. You can't really see what I'm doing right now. Let me go ahead and type out what I want to do. Okay, so that's comp help right there. And you can see it's set out to negative 50. If I put it to zero, which is by default how the font comes, you can see it's kind of spaced. I want it a little bit smushed together, but not too much. I think it looks pretty good. And I leave everything the same. So now we have a font. Okay, click the check mark. And there you go, you know, your little font there. This logo's kind of off. 
Alright, so I'm just going to place it basically under. And you can see it doesn't overwhelm the logo too much. XD might be a little too small, but uh, I'll set it to 85. Okay. Alright, the next part I want to do is before I add any effects to the font, what I want to do is add the light streaks onto the logo and bring them around the font, you know, come around the font just like that, as you can see in the default in my wallpaper right there. Keep in mind, I most likely will not duplicate the same exact streak I did because I'm not pro like that, but I will do as good as I can. Alright, so basically, I'm going to bring it from up here. No, you know what? I need to show you how to set this up. Get the brush tool. Make sure your brush is set to a nice size. For example, mine is set to 29 right now. If I just make a demo streak next to it, you can see it's way too thick for my logo. It would totally overwhelm the logo and take away that whole aspect. Control Z to undo that. I'm going to bring it down to about 9. Of course, depending on how big your logo is, how big your wallpaper is, you might have a different size. Um, you can see that's a pretty nice size for my logo. So, all right. So I have my my brush set to nine. It's about the default one with a, kind of a little fadeish edge to it, a little hardness. Actually, it says a hundred percent hard. But. All right. Well, it's set on nine, the default brush that Photoshop gives me, and I want to go to the pen tool. Make sure it's set on pads. Okay, that's very important. All these things up here are important. Okay. Make sure the brush is also set to white, and we're good to go. I'm going to start up here. I'm, I'm going to zoom out a little bit so I can see what I'm doing. I'm going to start up here, kind of out of the canvas, and just drag my mouse down to about right here in my logo. I'm going to click and hold, and I'm actually going to bring it this way. Click, hold, that way. Click, hold, and then I'm going to go click, hold, there we go. Then I'm just gonna like bring it around like that. So again, it's not exactly how it turned out on the main wallpaper. Let me see. Yep, see so I have one, two, three, four going through it. I only have one, two, three. Uh, I kind of messed up on this one. I'll do it over again for you guys. I'll go. What's that? How do I? I start out going down. So one. Two, three, four, something like that. I don't even recall. Okay, well, let's just say, for example, I want to use that. Again, it's not exactly how I did it. Not sure how I did it, um, but I did it. Okay, so I'm going to click, press the A key on my keyboard here. I'm going to go and select my path. It's already selected for me, though. Go to Stroke Path. Make sure it's on brush and simulate the pressure. There you go. You can see I have a a stroke right there. Click off of the path and press backspace. There we go. Looks pretty good. Eh, whatever. Next, what I want to do is create a mask so I can make it look like this streak is wrapping around my logo. So I'm gonna make sure the layer two is selected where my uh let's see if I turn this off where my stroke is. I'm gonna make a new mask. And basically, what a mask does, if you're not familiar with it, it just temporarily, like, it allows you to erase without really erasing. For example, if I accidentally um, erase too much, let's say I go, oh, dang, you know, I wasn't supposed to erase all that. I just go back to white and revive what I erased. This is not just for the brush tool, this is for, like, images or anything it's an effect that Photoshop really gave us. It's a nice little feature Photoshop has. Okay, so what I usually do actually is start with the top streak going over, under, so I'm gonna take this part out, so over, under, over, under. That's basically what I do every time I uh, do these streaks. It just helps me think so, all right. So, let's zoom out a little bit. We can see now it looks like it's wrapping around the logo. Now, what I want to do is actually add the glowing effect to it. So, I'm going to right-click this layer and go to Blending Options, 
and I'm gonna go to outer glow. I'm gonna zoom in a bit over here. That's just control plus brings the canvas in and out. I want to set this depending on what color your uh, logo is, of course. You're gonna set this to a different color. It could be green, blue, turquoise, whatever you need. Cyan, you know, whatever you need there. I'm gonna set it to a red. I don't want it to be too bright of a red. I want it kind of like right here. Click OK. My opacity 100. Make sure blend mode is on screen. My spread. Um, let me see. Bring down spread and size. Kind of mess around with. It, it really depends on your taste. If you like uh, this to be really big, then that's up to you. I mean, that looks that doesn't look good at all. I actually like it to be kind of thin. My range, bring it down a bit. So my settings on this one, my technique is softer, my spread is 9, my size is 18, my range is 65%, my jitter is 0. So that's what I have right there. I'm going to click OK. Go back, back. So now you can see I have my whole thing going on here. What happened there? What's going on here? Went under and kind of looked ugly. Um... I don't think I reset. It's just the way I made it. Okay, so again, be careful for this over here. I kind of messed up, but um, kind of looks like it just got chopped off. So it really depends on how you make your line. But this is just for tutorial purposes, anyway. So, okay, so now I have my glowing line. I have my logo. I have my text, sort of. I'm gonna go ahead and brush up on the text right now. All right, so we have the glowing line and everything. Everything's good. Let's go back and go to our text. I don't know why. I always like adding the the glow effect to my text after, even though it really doesn't matter. That's just what I do. So I'm just gonna set this to red. And the funny thing is, when I made this wallpaper, I didn't change any settings besides giving it the original blend mode screen, uh, opacity 75%, technique softer, spread zero, size five, range 50%. I didn't change a thing. And you can see that in my wallpaper over here. It looks the same because I didn't do anything fancy with it. Alright, so that's basically all I did to the text. Next, we are going to do the brushes, which is very easy. Okay, so now we're going to do the brushes. We're going to use the brushes. I actually made a tutorial on how to get, how to download brushes and such. So here's the annotation somewhere on this video click it if you don't know how to use brushes and if you want to learn how all I'm going to say is I have I use two brushes in this tutorial the links to them will be in the description link to them will be in the description so go ahead get them download them and then come back to this video pause this video for the moment and then come back to this video watch it and see what I did okay so I'm gonna make a new layer here and with one of the brushes that I have a link to go to brush tool it's actually a grid okay so I actually which which one did I use here I think I used like this one right here yep okay so I actually use this grid and all I'm gonna do is make sure my brush is on white I'm just gonna go click there you go I have a grid there and you're like alright this doesn't look you know how yours did on your wallpaper that's because we haven't added our blend mode yet. Right click that layer and go to blending options and go to gradient overlay. You won't believe how easy this is. All I'm going to do is I'm going to leave this black one right there. I'm going to click this white here and I'm going to change the color of it to a red. I don't want it be to, uh, for it to be too you know, like out there but I want it to be eh, kind of subtle. Like a, kind of a darkish red slash lightish. Alright, so right there's nice. I like that. Click OK. Okay. Something you'll notice though is that it looks horrible because this layer is on top. I want to bring it under the logo, right under, right above the background black layer. Okay. So that's that. That's all there is to that really. Next thing I want to do is make another layer. Another layer here. Make sure it's right above layer 3. And it's just another grid. I'm just going to. Where is it at? I know it's like pointy at the end. This one right here. I use this brush. All I did was I went 
click. You know, it wasn't even that one. It was even mo more pointy. Which one was it? This one? Yeah, it's probably that one. Okay, so I just clicked this one, 959. I just went click. Make sure it's with the uh, white. Alright. Right click the layer. Go to blending options. Gradient overlay. And this time I'm going to bring black on the opposite side. So put it all the way to the end. I'm going to grab this white one. Make sure it's selected. And I want to actually sample a color from my other grid. Click OK. OK. And OK. There you go. That's how I had those brushes there. Very simple. You know what, looking back at this wallpaper, I think this red on this grid is too too uh too bright. So I'm gonna go to blending options, go to gradient overlay, bring it down a bit. About right there. Click OK, OK. Alright. So that's that. The second brush I used, yep, I used another brush. I'm gonna make it over layer four. And I'm gonna give this layer style overlay. I'm going to set my color to a gray. Click OK. And I actually got the other brush that I linked to in the description. And they're actually all these like circle things. They kind of look like alien squares. That's what I like to think of them as. Click anyone that, you know, stands out to you. Let's say I like this one. All I'm going to do is I'm going to resize it with my brackets here. And I'm just going to click, 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 and I'm going to go find another one, click, and there you go, done. You know, this one's probably too much out there, so I'm going to go the eraser tool, erase this one. I don't want it to stand out too much. Click, alright, let me see, right there, done, done, that's all I did on that wallpaper. So that's how I made this wallpaper. That's how simple it is. Sorry if this video turned out to be really long. It's just, you know, it, it turned out really long, but it's extremely easy to do. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. I know I had fun making it. I'm really glad you guys requested uh, for me to make this wallpaper because I enjoyed making the video. All right, you know what? Um these lines right here see how that glow is kinda coming out I'm actually gonna go fix that I'm gonna go in this black I'm gonna go fix that right now hold on a tad there we go and I'm kinda OCD right now I like to make sure everything's all fixed up alright so nothing kinda shows through alright so there we go. Anyway, glad I made this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. It's simple, simple wallpaper to do. Hopefully it has inspired you to make uh, different wallpapers with these, these uh, brushes, with whatever. And if you're proud of your work, go ahead and make a video response and show me what happened. You know, how your new wallpaper came out. I'm always up to see creativity. I'm always up to see uh, people's logos being used in awesome wallpapers. So there you go. And let's say you want to use this wallpaper, just go to File save as and save it as a JPEG or you know PNG save it wherever you want and set it as your wallpaper it's that easy guys so simple hope you've enjoyed it please rate comment and subscribe if you like the way this wallpaper turned out and if you didn't then hey that's up to you you know it's your own taste alright guys thanks again please check out my links though my website is comphelp.com my blog is comphelp.info my twitter account follow me on twitter by going to twitter.com slash comphelp if you want to make uh, extra money online like I do, check out cashcrate.biz. That's basically all I have to say today, guys. Thanks. Peace.